welcome everybody to another edition of our webinar uh, presentation. Uh, this week, uh, today we will be uh, dealing with the topic, uh, third party monitoring. Um, this is uh, basically going to show us how uh, Fronius, uh, through its communication interface, uh, interacts with uh, third party devices, or basically saying, uh, devices that are non phonious I think uh, just putting it in simple uh, English. So um, to do this with me today is uh, my colleague, David Wangi, who is a technical sales advisor for Eastern Africa. And then of course myself, Cyprian Okolo, the technical sales advisor for Western Africa. So together we'll be presenting this uh, webinar. And uh, to achieve this, we'll have to go through uh, the agenda. Uh, first off, we will be dealing with um, the communication interfaces that makes this interaction possible. So we'll be starting with the Fronius Data Manager, um, the Fronius Pilot, uh, the Fronius, we'll go through Fronius SolarNet, and then uh, my colleague David Mwangi will continue uh, with the Solar, solar Web uh, third party monitoring, uh, taking a deeper look at the Solar Web API, and then of course give you more information afterwards. So uh, without further ado, let's now continue. So for general monitoring and communication, we of course uh, require a communication interface for our devices, for our inverters. So uh, for the Fronius inverters, the SNAP inverters, for example, we use the data manager. And then for our new inverters that are in the market right now, um, the Gen 24 Plus and uh, the upcoming uh, Tauro series, we normally use the pilot. So we'll be taking a look at the hardware, uh, the communication interfaces that makes uh, interaction with third party devices uh, possible. So what is required? That's the question. So of course, uh, first off, we'll be dealing with the Fronius Data Manager. So basically, uh, Snap Inverters uh, come in two options. That's when you're ordering. You can either be uh, a Snap in inverter light or the one integrated with LAN or wireless LAN web server. So it is for us to note here that um, for the one integrated with LAN wireless LAN web server is the one that the data manager is integrated. For the light version, there is no data manager. So in this case, it cannot perform any communication uh, function. So please uh, would have to have that noted. And then continuing, uh, going further about uh, the data manager, it is basically a plugin card that uh, serves the function of a data logger, a web server, and of course a Wi-Fi card. Uh, this can monitor up to 100 inverters. And then, of course, uh, you can achieve visualization via uh, visualization of uh, its function via the Fronius Solar Web Portal, uh, Fronius uh, Solar Web App, and of course, Fronius Solar TV. It has uh, open interfaces, which include the Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU, with which you can communicate um, via the Fronius Solar API using the JSON protocol, uh, communicate with the Fronius Smart Meter using RS485 protocol, and of course, you can achieve energy management uh, with it. So um, the data manager can actually come in integrated inside the inverter or can also come in as an external device in a box, as you can see. Good, so having a closer look at uh, the communication interface of the Fronius Data Manager, um, we can see its features here, which includes the wireless LAN antenna, uh, the mode bus termination switch, the input-output ports, uh, of course, uh, the LAN mode bus TCP port, and uh, with its uh, respective IP switch. And then uh, these are LEDs that uh, basically give you or uh, shows you the state of function of the inverter via the data manager uh, card. So let's now look at how the data manager uh, communicates. Uh, of course, this is via its uh, communication interfaces. So for the Modbus RTU, uh, this uh, interface is used for the connection of simple devices. Uh, it is best used for connection of the Fronius smart meter, battery, and home pilot. 
uh, for the mode bus TCP, which is usually called the LAN, uh, LAN uh, communication, which is the LAN communication protocol. Uh, the interface is uh, basically used for IP enabled devices. And it's usually best for inverter control, which is why, uh, as we will see subsequently, uh, the uh, solar net ring is usually uh, achieved using uh, this communication protocol. And then, of course, as we will see and as will be handled by uh, my colleague, uh, David Mwangi, we we'll now see how the API communication via API functions. But this, just to give you a brief, it's uh, usually uh, HTTP. Uh, based, uh, which is best for web services uh, only, and uh, it's usually a read-only uh, service. An example of uh, how this is how it's done is um, um, by the communication from Fronius to, let's say, Luxon, which is uh, a home automation device. And um, just to put it more clearly, uh, you have this uh, communication overview. So basically, system data can be transferred in parallel to third party components and to Fronius solar web via the, these uh, communication uh, ports, that is the Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU or the uh, API using the JSON protocol. So with this, you can conveniently communicate to uh, other inverters, as in one inverter can communicate to other inverters using uh, the Modbus TCP. And uh, of course, you can communicate to a smart meter using the Modbus RTU. And then, of course, uh, you can communicate with your router using the network cable that is LAN or wireless LAN um, um, port. And of course, using the Modbus TCP, uh, uh, using the JSON protocol, you can also communicate with third party components. So, in this case, uh, we have the Noxon home automation device. Uh, this you can also query data using the router uh, via LAN or wireless LAN. So this, it's also uh, possible to have a communication uh, with uh, a more uh, a device that we are more familiar with, which is the Victron color control. That is when we have an AC coupled um, uh, system uh, connected or installed. So uh, this simply means that uh, we can query data. Uh, um, to make it a bit clearer, we uh, for those that uh, know, um, for an AC coupled system, you can have a wholesome view of the system uh, via the Victron BRM. But then you can also query data directly from the Fronius inverter using uh, the API, Fronius API uh, query uh, system, as will be dealt, dealt with uh, my colleague uh, subsequently. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, basically what I mean by my previous statement. So uh, this is just a screenshot of how uh, you can uh, communicate with um, a third party using third party protocol. So this, as you can see, is a PV inverter, the Fronius inverter. So meaning that you can actually uh, query data directly from this PV inverter. Although these are going to be, this usually going to be read only information, but at least you can get real time information from the inverter at any point in time. Good. So um, let's um, take a look at uh, features or characteristics of our Modbus RTU. So usually it uh, communicates via the RS485 uh, communication bus. Uh, you can actually put more components together uh, without necessarily using a router. Uh, when this is done, it uh, searches for the components connected by default without any necessary uh, configuration. Uh, we usually uh, recommend CAT5 and above tables. And um, of course, also recommend that you use twisted pairs. Um, for example, uh, what we can connect, or example of such connections exist with uh, the BYD battery connection, and of course, the Fronius uh, smart meter connection to uh, the Modbus uh, communication or termination ports. Uh, we also have alternative features to this. Uh, the Fronius data manager can, of course, uh, also configure the Modbus RTU to both interface, uh, uh, I mean, the Modbus RTU interface to read data and, of course, control the inverter. But then, 
if the mode bus RTU interface is configured to both control and read the battery data, uh, then uh, you can't use it uh, for a smart meter. So please uh, take uh, good note of this uh, because um, it is uh, a very, very vital information. So with this, it's now not possible to configure the mode bus RTU for uh, a device, say, the Furnace Hybrid or the Gen24 uh, hybrid inverter. So we cannot use it to uh, read inverter data and control because in this case, we require uh, a storage and meter. Okay, so uh, for the Furnace TCP, this is uh, basically Ethernet based. Uh, you can use the standard network technology to connect the device by simply plugging it and then uh, smart devices like the smart Kronos uh, own pilot are able to connect over the TCP. But with this, uh, the Kronos uh, data manager automatically finds the connected uh, device without uh, necessarily uh, going through any configuration, and it does this over the, uh, the internet. Uh, the Kronos own pilot wireless plan can be configured over the uh, WPS or access point function, which I'm going to show you later on. And uh, in this case, no additional configuration is also needed. Additional feature includes that you can activate the interface for reading inverted data, inverted data and then uh, it's not possible to control and read inverted data over Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP at the same time. You would have to select or use one um, um, one channel only at a time. Good. So um, let, let's um, have a look at the data manager commissioning. Uh, it's basically easy to set up. Uh, all you need to do is to scroll on your home page, scroll to the setup, uh, tap on it, uh, select Wi-Fi access point, and then activate it. So once you activate your Wi-Fi access point, and um, you would now need to enter the password, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you will be automatically connected uh, via Wi-Fi to the button. So afterwards, you would now have to open uh, on your browser and type in uh, the IP address as shown, 192.168.250.181. This automatically uh, opens uh, the setup wizard which uh, through which you can now continue with your um, uh, commissioning. So in this case, as you can see here, there is a uh, function, the WPS uh, function, Wi-Fi protected setup. So with this, you can uh, easily connect to a router without uh, necessarily uh, typing any password. So it's um, kind of a shortcut connection to a router, which is, uh, which makes the connection quite uh, easy. So that was for the data manager, which uh, is the uh, communication interface for all our SNAP inverters. So we'll now look at the communication interface for uh, Gen24 Plus series and Taro series. So yeah, so the communication interface is uh, called the pilot. So the pilot uh, comes with a LED status display it's uh, performed the same function as the data manager, which is uh, being a data logger, a web server, and of course, a Wi-Fi card. And then, of course, like the data manager, uh, can um, help achieve visualization via Fronius Solar Web Portal and uh, Fronius Solar Web App. It has uh, multiple open interfaces. It has two Ethernet. Uh, unlike the data manager that has one, it has two Ethernet uh, ports that can be used to achieve Modbus TCP connection. Um, two Modbus RTU ports, interface is available, and of course, um, digital input and output ports. Uh, WSD function, which is a, which is a wired, wired shutdown function, uh, you have a dedicated time for that. So it's a part of our discussion for today. We're just basically uh, giving you the open interfaces through which uh, communication can be achieved between the inverter and other devices. Okay, um, just, uh, just to give you a brief uh, information about uh, SunSpec, 
as you can see here, SunSpec is basically uh, an alliance of uh, different manufacturers that um, uh, makes it possible for their products to communicate via a common channel. So that, of course, makes it possible for um, Fronius products, for example, to communicate with uh, non-Fronius uh, products. Good. So um, going forward uh, with the pilot uh, and how it's able to achieve uh, communication, inverter communication, it has a light sensory button through which you can open uh, or activate the Wi-Fi access point. So by the time you um, push it once, the touch sensitive button in between the two indicator LEDs, it automatically activates the Wi-Fi access point. Two quick pushes activates the WPS function, the wireless protected function. Uh, and then uh, one lock push is uh, basically for uh, quitting service messages and for activation, activation and deactivation of the key lock. So um, let's look at the Modbus interface interfaces. Um, we have a 10 uh, pull plug, but then, uh, like I said earlier, we have two Modbus ports that uh, can be usable. And uh, in order to make use of any of the mode bus uh, ports, you will have to activate it using the deep switches, as you can see here. Uh, let's have a closer look at it. Yeah, so as you can see, there are deep switches here, and we have um, mode bus zero and mode bus one. So these are the two mode bus ports. So in order to use any of these mode bus, please make sure that you turn it from position zero to position one. Excuse me, as you can see. So, this uh, basically activates uh, the Modbus. Um, I'm, I'm making it ready for connection to either the Fonia Smart Meter, the Home Pilot, and of course, uh, the VUID battery, which is uh, the compatible battery for now uh, with Fonia uh, Gen 24 Plus. So, let's take a look at the digital input output ports. So, here we have uh, four free digital input output ports. Uh, these are 12 volts DC with uh, a power capacity of six watts that can be used to intelligently manage um, load. These loads could in include uh, pool pumps, uh, air conditioners. Uh, it could serve as a control uh, port for charging stations for electric vehicles, and of course, uh, so um, yeah, so that's uh, basically how you can use uh, the digital input and output ports to control other devices. Yeah, so um, yeah, through these ports, you can conveniently control other devices, uh, but then this can of course be done using some uh, conditions. It could be via uh, power production or via power surplus. And then, of course, you have to define your threshold, either feeding or consumption threshold, and then, of course, define the durations with which this can happen. And then, once this is done, you can conveniently control um, your other heavy loads per se. So, let's uh, take a look at uh, the Fronia SolarNet, which is a uh, a uh, specific communication uh, protocol between Fronius inverters and other Fronius devices. As we can see, um, it's, a, a, it's comprised of a ring uh, topology-based uh, connection channel. Uh, each of the device has inputs and uh, in and out ports. Uh, these are RJ45 uh, which of course uh, implements the Modbus TCP communication protocol. And then, um, of course, it's recommended that CAT5 cable uh, connections are uh, used. And then, of course, like I said earlier, we have termination plugs, uh, these which are usually RJ45 termination plugs. So, since so each of the devices have in and out, uh, for the device using or with the data manager, or in this case, the data manager uh, box, uh, you would have the cable connection going out of it into the next device that it is communicating with. And then from the out, it goes to the end of the next. And then it continues until 
you get to the last uh, device in uh, the ring. And with that, you have stop plugs on the out port and the stop plug on the in port of the uh, device with the data manager. So as you can see, the ring represented in this case. So same thing happens if you're dealing with, uh, this is in the case of using the data manager box. So it will also, it can also be the same thing when you're using uh, an inverter that has a data manager integrated in it. And so please ensure that uh, for the device having the data manager, it's in the master position and then all other uh, devices are automatically going to be in slave position. Meaning that even if you have a device or an inverter that has a data manager integrated in it, you would have to put off the data manager because there can only be one master in one solar net ring. Good, so um, let's look at data communication uh, via Wi-Fi. So as you can see in this case, uh, we can have communication uh, to, uh, to the router uh, via Wi-Fi. As you can see, all the inverters communicate independently. And then through this, uh, you can have, uh, you can get integrated inverter data on your uh, monitoring device, be it a laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Uh, this can also be done via cable, so meaning that you can set up a solar net ring. So by the time you set up the solar net ring, you can now connect to the router using uh, cable or by, via Wi-Fi. So by so doing, you can now have access or monitor this device via your monitoring, monitor the inverters via your monitoring uh, device. So um, this brings me to the end of my part of the presentation. So which was basically to give you a peripheral of um, what you need to actually uh, communicate with third party devices, that is devices that are not drones. So to continue with uh, the presentation, I will now hand over to my colleague, uh, David Mwangi, who will continue from this point. So David, uh, you can continue. All right. So. Thank you so much, uh, Cyprian. Um, I will now be checking over and go through the remaining bit of the presentation. And to start with, we are going to be looking at the SolarWeb uh, monitoring platform. That is the platform offered by, by Fronius for monitoring all Fronius installed products. In a nutshell, uh, SolarWeb offers two categories of uh, user accounts. So one would be a free version and another that is a premium version. So as you would expect, the premium version has more detailed information than you would get with the basic account type. So looking at how SolarWeb basically would give you information, this would happen through very user-friendly uh, display of current energy flows, as well as detailed values and data by clicking on the values. So to the right here, you can see just um, a screen shot of how these bubbles would appear like in SolarWeb. And if, for instance, you were to click on any bubble, then it would expand and, tell, and show you exactly what is happening with that particular section of the system. So for instance, in this case, if you clicked on the battery section, then you would see um, what is the percentage of charge, how much the battery is being charged or discharged with and so forth for all the other bubbles in the monitored system. So with the Fronius uh, premium account, uh, of course, like I said, you get more detailed information than with a, with a free version. And what I should mention here is that uh, all our Fronia system partners have access to a free SolarWeb premium account. So therefore, becoming a Fronia system partner also accords you some benefits as, as far as a free monitoring of all your systems is concerned. So with a premium account, uh, you get a display of the daily characteristic values uh, for production as well as uh, consumption across the entire system run duration. So this can be data uh, for the last uh, one year, five years, depending on how the system has been operating. 
And then of course, you are going to get a very customized uh, reporting uh, by freely configurable channels and time periods. So the inverters have quite a number of channels that can be configured to set data into SolarWeb or to filter out the required data into SolarWeb. And the same data can be used to achieve uh, different kinds of analysis that you might want to do. Then, of course, you get uh, with a premium account a permanent overview of power consumption, especially uh, how much you are taking from the grid. And therefore, this allows you to have an overview of your energy balance and control the costs of power that you are using. In terms of uh, the return on investment, by using the premium account on SolarWeb, you are able to, do, to have a visualization of what is your return on investment like by analyzing the various data that is pr presented in SolarWeb. So in addition to that, we have also a newly implemented uh, feature such as energy meteorology. And with a SolarWeb premium account, you can access this section as well uh, very easily. On top of that, uh, SolarWeb would allow or afford you the opportunity for system management. And this would allow you to manage not only one system, so you can imagine if you have several systems installed, uh, using only one uh, SolarWeb account, you are able to switch from one account to the other by using a widget or list view for all your systems. And to the right here, we have the screenshot that is showing us a widget version of how the different uh, systems would look like in your account, or a list version to the bottom here of how the systems are listed. So SolarWeb would also allow you to export uh, self-consumption data uh, as CSV files. So this can also include uh, uh, exporting of automatically generated reports. And also it gives you the opportunity to uh, be able to diagnose errors that are uh, within the systems, either one system or many systems. So you can, for instance, compare between two inverters in one system, if you have more than one inverter in a system, or if you are using an inverter uh, with two MPPTs, like most of our uh, Fronius inverters do have, then you can compare what is the uh, performance of one in MPPT by inverter versus the other, and therefore be able to know if something needs to be checked in advance. So the weather widget also becomes uh, quite helpful, especially when you want to do uh, energy meteorology and forecast how much energy you are going to be producing over a given period of time. So this system can give you uh, exact data for the location where you are in. But I would like to mention here, if you do not have a local weather station for your system made, which you can achieve using the Fronius uh, weather sensors, then the location, uh, the data that you get for your location as far as weather is concerned, goes or comes from the nearest weather station that might not be so close. So sometimes you might get a bit of inconsistent data depending on how far the system is to the actual weather station. So now having uh, talked about uh, Fronia SolarWeb, now we come to a very interesting part of the presentation whereby we are going to be looking at that party monitoring that you can achieve out of Fronia's SolarWeb. But before I go there, I would like to launch a poll to quickly see if you are familiar with this option of monitoring. So the question for today or our poll question for today is, are you familiar with application programming interfaces? So please give us your feedback on this uh, question. And the answers are yes, somewhat, you, so you're fairly uh, knowledgeable on that, or you are pretty green on this area and therefore We'll be very happy to share this information with you today. So I'll leave the poll on uh, for the next uh, 20 seconds or so, and then I'll close it and share the results with you. So I can see quite a number of you have managed to set your feedback. Uh, just about 10 seconds, then I close it and share the results. All right, so let me share the results with you. So as we can see, uh, the biggest portion of our attendees today at 62% say they do not have or are not familiar with application programming interfaces. And then we have uh, a good number at 23% who say they are familiar with the APIs. And then 
another smaller portion say that they some they have some level of knowledge with APIs. So um, this therefore becomes a very interesting opportunity to see how you can interface third-party devices uh, as well as monitoring platforms directly with Fronia's SolarWeb so that without going directly to Fronia SolarWeb, you are still able to get all the data that other users going to Fronia SolarWeb are getting. So let's go and now look, have a look at what is this API. So the API in a nutshell basically means a progr an application programming interface. So in this uh, uh, figure or diagram over here, we can see that on one side we have a client application, then we have what you call the cloud or the internet, and then we have an, uh, an API here, and this is what we refer to as a representational state transfer inter uh, API. So this is one of the various public APIs that are available for use. And then on the other hand, we have the uh, SolarWeb uh, server, as well as the uh, storage that SolarWeb is getting data from. So the customer application basically is using the API to request data from the server. And the server in this case is uh, SolarWeb. Then the server, uh, which is SolarWeb in this case, uh, is storing this data that it's getting from the various systems that you have installed um, and is providing data to the client application through the API. So going further, uh, we also look at what is the process uh, of getting this data and what is required therefore is that you just basically have to add your system uh, or you basically can add an API without any hardware additions, and you just require uh, an active SolarWeb uh, user, user account, as well as a PV system that is sending data to uh, Fronia SolarWeb. In terms of the data that you're going to, to be seeing, you are going to see all the data that is available for display in Fronia SolarWeb, uh, that you can request all that, uh, all that data, and this would include current data, archived data, energy flows, as well as aggregated data. So you are basically accessing SolarWeb, even though you're not logged into SolarWeb, as though you're actually on the monitoring platform itself. So the question would, would then be, um, why uh, SolarWeb API? So, and this term API can be used for quite a number of applications or other things. So it's not something that is unique to SolarWeb, but of course uh, it's something that you need to have an interface between a customer application and the server, which is, is in this case uh, the SolarWeb server. So as a customer, you can have access to all the raw data from your PV systems. You can build your own uh, application for displaying the, uh, the data from your PV systems in a customized sort of presentation. And then you can also create your own monitoring platforms. So if you imagine that you have, let's say, over 100 systems installed, and you find that accessing data via Fronia SolarWeb is not the best way you can do it, and you think you have other ideas on how you want to filter out data from your various systems, then the SolarWeb API becomes the tool or the interface that you need to be able to access this data from your PV systems. So, however, even when you're not using the Fronia SolarWeb directly, you are interacting with it through an API, Fronias would still have access to all those PV systems because they are bringing their data into Fronias SolarWeb and that therefore guarantees you best or optimal support from Fronias in case you have any issues with your systems. Also remember that for all the warranty registrations that you need for your devices, depending on your market conditions, you are going to require to have access to Fronia SolarWeb for you to extend the warranties on the various uh, devices that you buy from uh, Fronias. So looking at the uh, API between a customer application and uh, SolarWeb, so all the aggregated data from multiple PV plants and usage patterns can, uh, can therefore be uh, uh, queried or called up by using the API. The other alternative would therefore be without uh, using Fronia SolarWeb, that you have a local API on the data manager. So my colleague already explained how to go about setting up the data manager and the interfaces that are available on the Fronia's data manager. 
So in this case, um, even without a connection to Fronia SolarWeb, you can query data directly or locally from the Fronia's data manager. But we do prefer that you query data using a SolarWeb API because, as I said before, it allows Fronia's to be able to support you better in case you have any issues with your systems or you still have to bring your systems uh, as far as the registration is concerned into uh, Fronia's SolarWeb. So how does this uh, SolarWeb API work? So in a nutshell, as already described, the API is basically a key or a code that is developed. And this code is sent to SolarWeb through the API. And then SolarWeb forwards the aggregated results for that query or that, for that uh, API call, which then is transmitted to the customer application. And then the customer application is at interpreting this data into uh, figures that are easily readable by the customer who is requesting for this data. So this is in a nutshell how the API, the SolarWeb API is functioning. So what are the benefits of the API? So one of the key benefits is that you have easy data integration into existing or new applications. And this therefore enables uh, you to offer a new level of service to add customers. And as an example, you can do integration to other monitoring platform or visualization platforms. And one of the most common examples is what we give as the smart home uh, platform. So if you have a smart home management platform, you can query all the data that is available from Fronia SolarWeb to be able to manage uh, your home better as far as energy utilization is concerned based on how much therefore the Fronia's installed system is generating for you. So the API can also practically be used by any pro programming language and therefore it makes it very easy to use. And then of course, as I earlier mentioned, if you have this connection already existing to SolarWeb and you're not using a local connection by a, a local data manager, then Fronia's is able to offer you uh, better support in this case. So just to extend it, we can also summarize it by saying that the Fronia's SolarWeb API would al allow you to hide complex complexity as a developer. So you don't need to worry about how SolarWeb as a platform or a coded software itself is functioning. So all that complexity is taken away from you by just using a simple API code to query for data uh, from uh, the SolarWeb server. Also, it allows you to extend systems to partners. Already as mentioned, you can offer different kinds of services to your ad customers or even integrate into that party monitoring platforms. And also it makes the uh, software components reusable for in different devices or applications. So what are the key features of the uh, API? So the key features would include uh, filtering, and this uh, would mean that most API calls support filters. Uh, this would be devices and or channels, which reduce the amount of data, therefore, that uh, you're getting as a result of every API call. You can also uh, have paging for large amounts of data, so the caller does not get too much data at once. So, and this makes, therefore, uh, the call, the API call uh, much faster. So you don't have to load all the data at once so you can page it at intervals as required so and this is something that is built in into the api key depending on which data you want to to call from SolarWeb. then in terms of uh, html or json error extensions the api therefore provides additional information for error analysis so if something is uh, going wrong with the queries that you're making you can be able to troubleshoot directly uh, from the API key that you are using. So let's now look at um, API usage. So what are the authentication methods? So when you're basically using, let's say, um, the Fronia SolarWeb uh, account that you're operating, so you own, of course, some PV systems, and you have an email address that is attached to the Fronia's uh, SolarWeb account. And using the permissions given, then you're able to access uh, the, the systems that are connected either by ownership or the, the permissions granted and be able to monitor uh, directly from SolarWeb. So 
using an API, you can have an impersonation with a JSON, the JSON web token. So you can actually be able to see uh, the system in the context of another user. So even though you're not the actual user in SolarWeb, you are actually looking at the data coming from SolarWeb as though you are the actual user in SolarWeb doing the monitoring. So um, with the impersonation, with the JSON web token, the user also provides uh, SolarWeb credentials. And this, of course, uh, gives direct access to the user's data. And then, of course, Fronius would provide a secure logging method. Uh, so once you, you have been authenticated, you do not require to provide additional credentials for you to be given access to SolarWeb. So as you're going to see later, once the SolarWeb logging credentials are required and you have the relevant uh, API key, then SolarWeb gives you a secure login and transfer of data into the customer application. So um, when you come to interactiveness of the user interface, so there is a possibility for initial testing of the API without writing a single line of code. So why, what I should mention here is that if you do intend to use the SolarWeb API, it would be very, very helpful if you are familiar with a bit of coding. So because you are going to encounter uh, some lines of code that you need to develop. So, but before you start working on the complete API set of codes, then you can have a very fast way of testing how this SolarWeb API is working. So this user interface also acts as a documentation and provides more details about every API call. And the user interface, that is the Soaga user interface, is actually embedded in Fronia's SolarWeb. So when you go to, if you are to access this, uh, uh, URL that is given here, then you would be able to go into Fronia SolarWeb and get a list of all the things that you can query from Fronia SolarWeb as far as your systems are concerned. So, and let's see if I can give you a quick demonstration of this just to see how uh, this actually works. Sorry. So, so if you type in the exact code that I have given you that was shown in the presentation, then it would bring you to this uh, loading page over here. So, and over in this loading page, then you can see all the data that you can query from uh, SolarWeb as a third party API. So you can get all the aggregated data, the values, uh, then current flows, energy flows, metadata, as well as real-time values. So if you are to come, for example, to real-time values and you right-click on it, and you click on then inspect element, these are the codes that I am talking about. So if you are familiar with this coding, it might be very helpful to develop an API. But even before you get into developing the coding, you can very easily, uh, out of this uh, loading page, that is the Swagger user interface for the SolarWeb, be able to check if your developed codes are going to work as desired. So if you click on any of the subtopics and get, then it shows you if this system is able to acquire information. And here are all the parameters that you can enter as part of the API key to be able to generate uh, this results that you're trying to get from SolarWeb. So before you even imp implement this solution as uh, a customer application, you can try out how it is working exactly right from the SolarWeb uh, Swagger user interface. And then one, once you have all the parameters entered, you can click on the try it out and you can see if you are, your API key is functional or not at this point. So let's now continue with uh, the other part of the presentation. And we look at uh, a simple integration, as I had also mentioned, we can also do the API calls right from the data manager uh, on site without going to Fronia SolarWeb. And this is actually a very simple process if you do understand some basics of uh, uh, coding. 
So, and this is, uh, as you can see, does not require very sophisticated coding. So, if you go to your local data manager interface, once you have it opened, as my colleague had explained earlier how to open it up, you are going to be able to see what is your IP address that you're using with the data manager interface. And therefore, the IP address would look as it's shown here. So, you can have HTTP uh, forward uh, slash double and then the IP address as it shows here. Then what you need to do is basically to delete uh, the, the numbers or the letters after the last le uh, number of the IP address. And then after that, you're going to enter this API key. So as shown here, uh, you enter the whole of this uh, statement after the last uh, letter of the IP address. And once you click on enter, then you basically are going into the scope of becoming a software developer in a nutshell. So simply put. So just to break down the API key, you can see here the first part of the uh, API, which is solar underscore API, is actually the request name. Then you have what we refer to as the question mark separator. And this is now what is uh, getting data for you from SolarWeb and, or from the data manager in this case. And therefore, the statement here reads get inverter real-time data, and therefore this is the question mark separator because this is what is being queried or called upon. And then we have what is the parameter. The parameter, of course, is the system that you are querying the data from. So that becomes a very simple process of becoming a software developer uh, very, very uh, simply. So in, term, in terms of billing, of course, uh, what is important to say that uh, depending on the number of API calls that you're making, you're going to generate quite a bit of data that you need to, of course, pay for. Uh, and therefore, we, there is a billing plan that is used. And this billing plan is based on data points used per month. So if you're using uh, zero to half a million data points monthly, then you can have a, a free sort of package. And then if you are a small user, and then this means half a million to about two and a half million data points monthly, then you can have uh, an appropriate billing plan, like life like that, and then all the way to the pro stage whereby you're using over 60 million data points per month. So what is important to mention here that the amount of data points that you'll be getting will be determined by the number of inverters you have, and then what of course is the data resolution. And data resolution in this case might be indicated by how often are you uh, getting data from your different systems, are the systems that setting data every minute? Are the systems setting data every five minutes or 10 minutes and things like that? So a user with a large number of inverters, uh, in this case, can get a huge amount of data with the same number of API calls, uh, similar to a user with just one inverter. So that, that is very important, important to understand. So if uh, you're making uh, one call per day, you can get more data than an API call every hour. So it depends on how much data you are querying for every API call. So, and therefore this indicates that the data per API call is varying uh, from call to call. And thus the best way as already described would be not to pay for API calls, but for uh, data that you are, data points that you are actually using. Because the number of API calls might not necessarily correspond to the number of uh, data points that you have generated as a result. And therefore, the best solution as already uh, highlighted here is that pay instead for the number of data points that you have generated or that you have received as a result of the API calls. So let's now get into API calls and look at uh, the kind of calls that you're able to make out of uh, uh, SolarWeb. So you can get PV system information, you can get also aggregation data, you can get historical data, power flow data, as well as service messages data, and meteor data uh, from your PV system. So in terms of the PV system information, uh, as I mentioned before, even though you're not going to be uh, using SolarWeb directly, you're going to access all the information from the PV uh, systems as though you are act an actual SolarWeb user. So you can, you can be able to see what are the total number of the PV systems linked to that SolarWeb user account, the list of the PV systems, as well as a detailed information about the PV systems. That would include also the number of devices per given system, 
as well as the number of given uh, the detailed information about the devices of a PV uh, system. Uh, so things like smart meters, home pilots, and things like that, if you have them connected in your uh, PV system, you're going to be able to see them out of an API call that is made. You can also make an API call for aggregated data, and this is uh, energy production and consumption data of a PV system aggregated over a period of time. And this could be over the entire lifespan of the system, could be over a period of one year, could be over a month, or could be the daily data that your system is uh, generating. Then, of, of course, you can also get the historical data. Uh, so the data points that are logged uh, within the inverter every five minutes are transferred to SolarWeb at regular intervals. So therefore, you can get the data for the entire PV system, or you can also make an API call for the historical data for a single device of a given PV uh, system. So power flow data, this is something that you get uh, as real-time data from the PV system, <clears throat> and therefore, as explained before, how the SolarWeb is displaying data for you, the power flow data will include uh, production of the PV system. What is the consumption out of the PV system? If you have a battery integrated, what is the, the stage of uh, charge? Is it, is it charging or is it discharging? And then you can see whether you are feeding power or consuming power from the grid. So what, what is important here to understand is that uh, all the API calls that are routed through uh, SolarWeb for uh, power flow data in real time are actually uh, given directly to the PV systems. And therefore, if you're making an, an extensive number of API calls, this will lead to a high number of, uh, or a high data volume, which in, in turn could lead to high costs for the uh, end customer as well as data, as far as data is concerned. So it's also important to plan how you make your API calls. Also, as mentioned before, uh, SolarWeb affords you the opportunity to see the service messages depending on the state codes and error codes uh, of the different uh, PV systems or devices that are in the PV system. So using the API call, this is also possible. So for all error messages and error codes, uh, state codes, you do not have to go directly to SolarWeb once you have a third party monitoring platform. So you can make all these queries using API calls and get uh, the service messages that are related to any of the installed uh, systems. Also the premium uh, data section or weather section with the SolarWeb can also be queried through an API call. So you can get all the weather and PV yield forecast for a given system uh, by using the API calls. But of course, this, as already mentioned, would be possible only when you are using a premium SolarWeb account. So in summary, what have we said today as far as the APIs are concerned? So we have basically said a SolarWeb application interface is an application uh, to application interface for accessing data from the SolarWeb server. And then two applications, that is a client requesting data and SolarWeb as a server that is delivering data are interacting through an, a programming uh, or an application programming interface with each other without, without any user intervention. And therefore the general uh, arrangement, just to repeat it, would look like this. So that on one side you have a client's application that is requesting for this data through an API uh, from SolarWeb. Then SolarWeb, once it receives this uh, API call, is going to the database and looking for the relevant data that has been queried. And then SolarWeb, also through the API, is going through the internet and giving a response to the client's application for the requested data. So if you uh, would be interested to learn more about uh, the application programming interfaces, there are a lot of uh, resources available online whereby you can learn a lot about uh, the APIs and also we can also uh, support you in terms of if you want now to integrate an API uh, into SolarWeb for querying data once you develop your own monitoring platforms or applications uh, we would be happy to support you as far as that is concerned. So that basically brings us to the end of our content for today. But for further information on all our products uh, regarding operation instruction and op inst installation instructions as well, you can access a lot of downloads from our website directly, uh, fronias.com. 
Then of course, from YouTube channels, uh, we have quite a number of resources that we have done, uh, webinar recordings. And more particularly also for the Sub-Saharan Africa, we have uh, a dedicated playlist for the Sub-Saharan region, whereby we post all the webinars we do for the Sub-Saharan region. So if you are interested, uh, please always visit YouTube at your own free time to access uh, these resources. On top of that, uh, for any additional queries uh, on this particular webinar for today or other topics that you may have, we welcome you to get in touch with us depending on your location. For South Africa, please get, uh, or Southern African region, please get in touch with my colleague uh, Mohammed. And then for Western Africa, uh, Cyprian is going to be the contact person for you. Then you are located anywhere in the East African region, uh, I will be the contact person uh, for you. So, and with that, we have basically come to the end of our uh, webinar for today. So I'd like to take this opportunity to 